Alrighty, in today's video, I'll be showing you how you can add up task and sub item minutes using Notion formulas. We'll be using two number properties to measure our time in minutes and our forecast in minutes. And we'll be creating four formulas to show how much time we've spent on each task from a forecasting perspective and then actual minutes that we might have spent on the task. We're relating a project database to a task database, and we're going to be including sub items within these tasks to add that extra layer of items and calculations. I think because sub items feel different from our traditional relations that we use databases, it might feel a little different, but in actuality, it is actually pretty simple to set up a basic set of formulas in which we're able to understand how much time we've actually spent on a sub item in total and how much we've spent on the actual task itself. So let's get started right away. The first thing we're going to want to do is create a formula for our tasks. And we're going to want to do that twice for both our forecasted and actual minutes that we've spent. And so what it really comes down to is a series of nested formula functions where we're using the map function. Once we have sub items enabled, we are just going to map the sub items and we want to specify the current minutes and then take the sum of those minutes so that we have an idea for the total, right? So we're going to title this sub item minutes because we haven't added any sub items. We're just going to add a few here. And so as you can see, the sub item minutes shows right away when you add those sub items, right? The neat thing about formulas is sub items are just another relation property. They're just titled separately and they're just used from a hierarchy perspective as opposed to a purely relational standpoint that I've been sharing on this channel. As you can imagine, we can do the same thing with the forecast. I'm just going to add some filler information in there. And what we can basically do now is do the same thing where we're mapping by the sub item, comma, current, dot, and we're going to be just using the forecast. And again, because we want to sum the total, we're just going to do dot sum, open and close. And now we have our forecasted sub items. Now we have our sub item minutes and forecasted sub items by task based on how we've configured these two formulas. As you can imagine, there's five here, five there, 10 there, 10 there, right? And it just continues like that. So our next step to aggregate all of our minutes from tasks and sub items becomes another set of formulas. So we're going to create four formulas to isolate the four instances of forecasted and actual minutes across sub items and regular task items. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning, we are just nesting two formulas. And so if we want to do total sub item forecast, for example, all we really have to do is we do map tasks and then we do current dot and we go to that formula that we just created forecasted sub items. So now we have those three entries for each sub item that exists within those tasks. And we'll just add dot sum to do that as well. Now I made four formula properties, but we can also just duplicate it, rename it to total sub item minutes. And what we can actually do is just remove that relation, scroll down again and find total sub item minutes. And so now all we have to do is duplicate the formula and then change the variable to recreate what we just did. Now, the next step to understand all of your forecasted to actual minutes spent across a project within all sub items and tasks is doing the same thing for regular minutes and forecasts for our regular tasks. As you can imagine, we don't necessarily have to create fresh formulas like we did. 
I think it's a good thing to just duplicate a formula and reuse it so that you have ultimately less work that you might need to do. So we just duplicate it, add our minutes, change it to total task minutes, right? And now we can duplicate that again, change it to forecasted total task minutes, go back to our minutes, and then change it to forecast. So as you can see, now we have four formula properties that will show you how much time you spent in your sub items and your forecasted items and for just the standalone tasks on their own. So I'm just going to add in another item there. And so now we have a way to add up all of our sub item minutes, our sub item forecasted minutes, our forecasted task minutes, and then our, our actual task minutes. This is nice in the sense that we can see everything in relation to each other, but I think we should go a step further by combining all of these formulas into one let's function. So I'm going to do let's, open that up, and what we can do now is define four variables, right? I'm going to do forecast sub, and I'm just going to add two commas to create our variables first before we define them. So forecasted sub, there's actual sub, there's forecasted task, and then there's actual task. And these might feel a little weird, but at the end of the day, we want to probably compare our actual task plus actual sub with our forecasted task minutes and our actual task minutes, right? Now we've set up this basic definition of variables. We can go back to those four formulas we've created and just copy already done. So sub item forecast, we can just do that. Sub item actual minutes, right? We can just copy there. Total task minutes, copy there. Forecasted minutes, we can just define there. Now, in this one formula, we've defined all of those variables we did in these other four formulas, so we can go ahead and delete them. And I'm showing you this because it never hurts to iteratively create formula functions one at a time, and then to aggregate them in one let's formula where you might want to define them and then manipulate them further to whatever best fits your needs. So basically I found the difference between forecasted and actual tasks and subtasks in minutes through this formulation. And I can create that output text in relation to the number that we just calculated, right? And notice how we get cannot do math on text and number. So what we can do is just format, open and close, add that space. And maybe we'll also add minutes at the end of it. Maybe we'll add a bolded text, so we can use style, and then specify quotation B. And so now we have this long output that says difference between forecasted and actual tasks and subtasks in minutes is 20. I messed up the variable output, so it's actually forecasted sub plus forecasted task minus actual sub minus actual task. We're basically adding up the forecasted time for both sub items and regular tasks and then subtracting the actual sub items minutes and actual task minutes to find that difference between forecasted to actual tasks and subtasks. So now that output shows how much time we actually saved from a forecasting perspective when we take that total difference across tasks and subtasks. So this is a very simple and introductory video, but I just also wanted to introduce how easy it is to manipulate sub items because they are just another relation. And I also wanted to show you how you can nest formulas by taking advantage of other formulas that you can extract through a relation as well. This is sort of a less of a tutorial and more about how you might be able to take advantage of a series of nested formulas and even being able to manipulate sub items and parent items just in case that might be helpful to you and your needs. Thanks for watching if you made it this far and I'll see you in the next one.